Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Cooking from Quarantine. Today we are making a bolognese sauce. Uh, this sauce goes great with, I mean personally I think any kind of pasta, the more robust pasta you can pair it with the better, and by that I mean any pasta that acts as a vehicle for delivering sauce. So this is great for, um, for penne or rotini. Uh, it's classically paired with a tagliatelle or a pappardelle, which are really wide noodles uh, because it gives it a lot of surface area for the sauce. I'm going to be using fasilli today because Baldur Foods delivered me 10 boxes of them and so I have to start getting through my pasta. Um, so our bolognese today, I'm going to show you the ingredients that we're starting out with. Bolognese is super simple to make. It's delicious, it freezes great, and you can kind of throw anything you want into it and it'll still be good. So I'll let you know which of these is uh, optional and which you should kind of stick to. So first of all, we're going to be using our favorite olive oil, Olive Oil Jones, still not being paid to endorse this. I just super love their products. This is a Spanish olive oil, extra virgin, which typically I don't cook with, but it's what I have in the house. This is a Pinot Noir, a California Pinot Noir from Julia James. I don't know this brand particularly well. Um, you don't have to use wine in this dish. You can use white wine in this dish. Uh, I picked Pinot Noir because it is a lighter red wine and I didn't want wine to be like the prevailing flavor in this dish. If you want to use some balsamic vinegar instead, toss that in. If you want to use a more bold, robust red, knock yourself out. Um, by the way, I know absolutely nothing about wine. I know quite a bit about food, almost nothing about wine, despite having been to Napa twice. Um, Pinot Noir, I had to look up where on the varietals it lands uh, in terms of lightness or darkness. It was between this and a Merlot that I had in the house. I also have some Chardonnay in the house, but I don't want to use that. I do like using red wine in a meat sauce, but um, you can you can skip it and swap it out for vinegar or you can use whatever wine that you like to drink. I'm using Pinot Noir. Uh, so that's Pinot Noir. Uh, we have tomato paste, which is a very important element of this dish. Don't skip it. A can of peeled San Marzano tomatoes. This is actually, it's going to sound strange, this is skippable in this dish. Um, but if you have stewed tomatoes, diced tomatoes, any kind of canned tomato you've got in the house, throw it in. Um, Worcestershire sauce. This is totally a skippable ingredient. Um, I happen to have it in the house. It happens to go really well with a bolognese, so I'm putting it in. You can skip it. Bay leaf, because I love using bay leaves in everything. This is skippable as well, but like if you've got it, you're never going to regret throwing a bay leaf into something that you're cooking. I have oregano, which also is skippable, um, but I personally like it in my bolognese sauce. It uh, makes it taste like a more classical tomato sauce to me. Kosher salt and fresh ground black pepper. These are not skippable ingredients. Um, our ground beef, not skippable in a bolognese sauce, uh, although you can swap out for the beef that you like. I happen to have two pounds of ground beef sitting in my freezer that I had to use, so that's what I'm using. But if you have um, a little beef, a little veal, a little pork, use what you like. Uh, speaking of pork, I had four ounces of pancetta in, the, in my fridge, and so I put that into the food processor to make it kind of like a meat paste. Don't say meat paste. Um, so we're tossing that in. Pancetta, totally skippable for this, but you know, the more flavors we have, the better. Um, this concoction, I, I was feeling like lazy today. I didn't want to use my uh, hand grater. So I threw two carrots, two stalks of celery, and half of a very large Spanish onion into my food processor and got it all kind of teeny tiny and shredded. Also in here is uh, four cloves of garlic. And um, I took a red pepper, red bell pepper, tossed it in my uh, toaster oven on broil, let it sit in there for five minutes, then took the skin off and put it into the food processor because I also really like roasted red pepper in this. Um, I happened to have some uh, Kumado tomatoes in my fridge, so I did the exact same thing. I didn't want that raw tomato flavor. I want all of these uh, flavors to be really rich and and 
bodied. And so I, I made this little tomato boat out of aluminum foil because tomatoes, when you um, heat them, they uh, get liquidy. And I threw those in the broiler as well, um, just for a couple of minutes till they started to blister. And then the other ingredient is uh, chicken stock. I happen to have a lot of chicken stock that I'm trying to get through. Uh, if you have beef stock in the house, you can do that. I personally feel that that's a very overpowering flavor for this bolognese. I like a lighter bolognese, you know, uh, flavored, embodied, and uh, round, but uh, not particularly rich and heavy. So I'm using chicken stock. If you want to use water, use water. Um, all of this is kind of like use what you have in the house. The name of the game in making a bolognese is layering of flavors. Every flavor that we put in should be allowed to develop before we put in the next flavor. That's how you get something that tastes really um, deep and wonderful. And I just realized I wanted to put in a smidge of nutmeg to this. Uh, and I didn't take it out. So we're going to add some nutmeg to it as well. Today's cooking gear is one of my favorite saute pans. This is by Allclad. Um, also, not being paid to endorse this. This is just what I have in the house. It is heavy as hell. This is a real pan. And um, kind of my rule of thumb with buying cookware, if you go to buy new cookware, is, um, and I believe this is an Anthony Bourdain-ism, if you smack someone over the head with it, uh, you want the head to dent, not the pan. So um, so this is a real like motherfucker of a pan. Um, I'm using this instead of my Le Creuset today because I wanted the surface area that this provides. Um, because first of all, I don't want this to take like a thousand years to uh, cook down, but also I want to be able to get things kind of brown at the same time. So I wanted a wider pan for this job. Mine has a lid and I'm going to be using that to help uh, everything kind of get happy and cook up together. But if you don't have a lid for your pan, then you don't, and that's okay too. So uh, this is what we have. We're gonna be taking out our nutmeg as well, just a little schmidge, and again, a totally skippable ingredient. The only necessary ingredients are olive oil, your mirepoix mixture, which can or cannot include um, a red pepper if you'd like it to, uh, the meat, and uh, something tomatoey, stocky, and uh, acidic, and salt and pepper. Other than that, kind of make it up as you go along. So I will meet you over at the stove. <laughs> meat, get it? Uh, and we'll start our bolognese. Okay, so we're going to get a medium-high flame going on our burner. And we're going to add a little bit of our olive oil. About a tablespoon to the pan. We don't want to drown everything. We just want it to be able to pull out the, the flavors. Where was that nutmeg that I was talking about? After all this, here we go. Nutmeg. We're just going to add a little bit. It adds a little something special to the flavors. That's all. So first into the pot to get all happy and delicious is our pancetta and our mirepoix with the garlic and, um, and roasted red pepper. And kind of everybody into the pool at the same time. Now with a, a pan that gets this hot, you really do have to keep an eye on the temperatures of everything. Everything's bubbling really nicely, but nothing crazy. Now, the reason I'm using so much veggie is not only because it flavors the dish, but because I'm using a lot of meat in this dish. If I were using only, say, a pound of meat, I would have used uh, half the amount of, um, of veggie, which would have been one carrot, one stalk of celery, a quarter onion, a half a red pepper, 
and um, probably still would have used four cloves of garlic. Let's get real. Okay, and so what we want is just to kind of cook off the raw flavors of these vegetables. I'm going to turn up my heat just a little bit more because I'm watching it and it can take it. We want to dry this out. We don't want any extra liquid in the pan. That's also kind of the, the game that we're playing with this entire bolognese is reduce, reduce, reduce. Everything we're doing is to get liquid uh, that we've put in to... Um, well, I'm saying evaporate out, but that's not really how reduction works. It's that it takes the, the sugar content of everything that you're putting in it, and it starts to caramelize it. So uh, we're actually not so much evaporating as we are turning liquids into solids. Okay. Letting this cook up a bit. Again, crank our heat up a little bit more because eventually we're going to want to get this pan hot enough to brown our meat. Um, and so a high heat is certainly necessary for that. And all of the veggies kind of cool off the pan. Okay, I'm going to let these cook for um, roughly like three minutes. The idea is just to sweat the vegetables, not to get them brown. I'll show you a close-up of what's going on in my pan right now. As you can see, all of the liquid is starting to cook off. And so what we're looking for is for all of this to be not brown, but um, drier looking. And then we'll know that we're ready to add our next layer of flavor. What I haven't done yet, which I should do, is I haven't seasoned this. Um, and we want to season as we go, again, because we're layering flavors. Also, salt helps draw out the liquid from anything you're cooking. So let's add right now about a, um, uh, about a half a teaspoon of our kosher salt. And our freshly cracked black pepper. If you're using powdered, that's fine, but just know that you're not living your best life if you're using the powdered stuff because fresh cracked is way better. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to add our tomato paste to this because we want to give our tomato paste a chance to, um, to brown a little before we put the beef into the pan, which, yes, we're looking to brown the beef, but the beef is going to add um, quite a bit of fat to this. And so I want to give, I want to give the tomato sauce, the tomato paste a chance just a fighting chance. And the way that I opened this can and then subsequently closed this can is making it so I can't even break in. Let's find our can opener. Try this baby again. Man, this little guy just will not open. Here we go. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. And we're going to take, I don't know, about, that looks good, about two tablespoons of tomato paste and get that into our pan. And you can decide if you'd rather your bolognese be tomato forward or, um, or meat forward. You know, it always depends on what you like, what your family likes to eat. Um, because this is cooking, you know? We get to improvise, we get to have fun with it. And the reason I grate the vegetables instead of dicing them, and feel free to dice them, um, I grate them because in a sauce, I like everything to be kind of indistinguishable from each other, as opposed to say, um, if I'm just sauteing or roasting something, I wanna be able to taste each individual flavor. I think the marriage of flavors in a sauce is much better when you grate or kind of pulverize all of the ingredients that you're putting in. Okay, so we're just looking for this tomato paste to get a little browner in color. That's called pinsage. 
you know, because that's what it's called. Um, and it, not to get it uh, brown or blackened, but just to kind of make it, um, we're going to cook off the kind of raw tinny flavor of using canned tomato paste. And um, we want it to be this kind of like great terracotta color, which it is slowly becoming. Let me show you. And it already smells terrific in here, I have to say. So we must be, we must be in the right direction. So now what we're going to do is create kind of a well in the pan uh, because we're looking for the hot spot in the pan so that we could toss our meat in. And all the ground beef is going straight in all at the same time. This is where if you haven't opened the windows in your apartment yet, you're going to want to. Um, we're not burning anything, but we don't have a commercial grade kitchen and uh, ventilation system, so it's possible that this is going to cause a little disturbance in the house if uh, you're not ventilating as much as you possibly can. Oh, this is already looking so good. And we don't need to cook the beef all the way through. This is going to be cooking for a while and we're going to be adding a lot to it. So the idea is that we just don't want it to be raw. We want to start browning the pieces. We want to start getting the beef um, really mixed in with the vegetables again so that they're kind of indistinguishable from each other. And that's how you know that you're, you've got a good texture going. It shouldn't look like clumps of, of meat as if you're making a stew. A bolognese should really be uh, much lighter than that. Nothing sticking to itself. Okay, so while we're waiting for our beef to brown, let's add a little more salt. Again, like another half teaspoon and Again, everything we're doing is in layers, okay? Each new layer gets new seasoning. That's what gives your cooking depth and body and interest and people eat it and go, ooh, what's, what's in this? You're like, you know, just love. But really, it's the nutmeg. Nutmeg is the thing that makes everybody go, oh, is this like, is this cumin? If anybody out there knows a reason why you should use cumin in your cooking, I'd love to hear it. I have a bunch of cumin in the house and I can't, I think I just don't cook those kinds of flavors. And so I never seem to have a reason to, uh, to cook with cumin. Okay, this beef is getting a little browner. Let me show you closer up. See, it's just losing its raw color. Okay, and now we're gonna start adding a few more herbs and more liquid. And we have to be very patient in this pr process because the liquid is gonna take some time to cook down and it's worth the wait. The more you can let this sit and simmer, and again, we're on a high heat now. The longer you can let this sit and simmer, the better it's going to be. So first of all, let's throw a little bit of oregano in there, just so that it really smells like Italian cooking in here. Uh, let's call that, let's call that about a, a teaspoon. And if you want to use basil, use basil. If you want to use thyme, go for it. Again, we're kind of inventing this as we go along. This is not a recipe that I've written down. This is a recipe that I've made up just from cooking and knowing what I like to eat. Mm, it smells so good in here. Okay, now we're going to toss in our peeled San Marzano tomatoes. So this is the first round of liquids going in that we're going to have to be patient with 
and allow to cook off slowly. The way it works with peeled tomatoes is we do it this way. First, we pour all of the juice in. And then we put our whole hands in here and we grab each tomato and you smush it in between your fingers, okay? No reason to get out a knife. No reason to get out your food processor. We are doing this straight up. Whoop. I squirted. Uh, we're doing this straight up I Love Lucy style, okay? If I could put my feet in here without burning myself, I would, um, because that I think would actually be the best way to crush all of these tomatoes. Um, we're just crushing, just crushing tomatoes. Could I have bought already crushed tomatoes? Sure, but then I would have deprived myself from this sensual experience. And who wants that? It's Corona times, baby. We gotta, we gotta get our jollies in. Okay, so we've got one last tomato in here. Enjoy it. This is not a clean kind of cooking. This is very, uh, I mean, if one were to be the apron type, one would wear an apron while cooking this. Um, I happen to have this lovely uh, apron over here, which I got as a gift from my gorgeous friend Nicole for I think my 30th birthday or my 25th birthday, who knows, all the birthdays kind of run together after a while. Um, but it's a fabulous apron and um, my, my in-laws back in the day, my grandparents-in-law and my great-grandparents-in-law used to be in the apron business. And so um, Nicole tracked down for me one of their old school aprons from I guess the 50s or 60s, which is obviously very cool. So I don't use it because I don't want to get it all mussed up, um, which is basically the only thing I say that about. I think that things that you're given that are old should be used and enjoyed, but that's really beautiful and uh, in limited supply. So, okay, we're going to allow this to keep cooking down and we're going to get our other set of tomatoes ready. So again, these were the tomatoes that I just kind of threw into the broiler because I, first of all, needed to use them. And second of all, um, I just thought that a different kind of tomato, these are tomato tomatoes, um, I thought a different kind of tomato would be just interesting in this dish. And again, add more body and depth and, and hey, what's in this qualities. And I just let them kind of get a little dark and blistery and um, they smelled good. So, you know, if it smells good, it will likely taste good. Okay, so. Again, all of this is kind of boiling and, or not boiling, but like simmering hard because we're trying to allow the, um, the juices to cook off of it. It doesn't have to be 100% dry, like don't be a hero about it, but we do wanna keep cooking off uh, the liquid as much as we can, particularly since we're gonna be adding a lot more liquid into this dish. Um, if you don't have stock in the house and you feel that your peeled tomatoes are kind of doing a bang up job, like fine, skip it. Everything in here is kind of fine, skip it. Uh, just as long as you keep tasting and flavoring all of your food. Okay. That's cooking down nice. Smells fantastic. Let me give you a closer look at what we're dealing with. Listen to that sound while you cook. I love cooking sounds. I think they're really amazing. And see how we're now starting to be able to see the bottom of our pan? That's because our liquid is finally starting to thicken up. That's the thing that you're looking for to let you know you're ready to go to the next step in your cooking. What we haven't done yet is season this layer, the tomato layer. We seasoned our veggie layer, our beef layer. Now we're going to season our tomato layer. But first, now that we're adding kind of a lot of uh, flavors to this, we are going to start really tasting our food. For now, that's actually really well salted. Um, 
I'm not going to add any more salt. I am going to add a little more pepper to it. Beautiful. And I just, whoop, see, this is a messy dish. You're going to have to clean your stove after making this. And look, like I'm willing to put off cleaning my stove till like till it's really disgusting and I'm afraid that I'm gonna get a roach problem, but like this is one of those things that you're gonna have to clean your stove. Sorry, everybody. But it is so worth it. A bolognese, especially it's like a rainy, dingy, kind of cold, windy day. A bolognese is so yummy. And I've actually found that it's a kid-friendly dish. Kids who like meatballs um, can be talked into trying bolognese. So if you've got a family, give it a shot and just put in the vegetables that you know your kids will eat. And again, we're, we're grinding everything up before we put it in. So um, if your kids are willing to eat a bolognese because it's basically like deconstructed meatballs, um, you can sneak a lot of veggies in here, um, make things a little easy on yourself at dinner time. Okay, so we're gonna let this uh, continue to reduce for probably another two or three minutes. Show you where it is right now in its process. And we'll be back when we are ready to add our wine. So it's been about four or five minutes on, uh, since we started letting this reduce down and let me show you where we are in terms of texture. So as you can see, it's not, it's barely coming back together when I try to separate uh, and run my, run my spatula through the pan, right? So that's how we know that there is really not much liquid left in here and we are ready to add our final layer of ingredients to this. So first of all, we have our nutmeg. With nutmeg, a little goes a long way. We're talking about like a half a teaspoon uh, or a quarter teaspoon even, just to give a little bit of interest. We're gonna put our bay leaf in. That's our other seasoning that's making its way in. One bay leaf, which we'll mix in. Cover our nutmeg so this doesn't go flying across the room. those seasonings happy together and then we're going to add all of our liquids. The first is our Worcestershire sauce. Again, you can skip this if you'd like. I think it adds a little something interesting. Um, we're going to add not a lot. Let's say a tablespoon, one to two tablespoons of Worcestershire just to give it a little interest, a little dark color, a little body. Mm. Smelling good. Tomatoey, that great beef smell. Also, the beef that you want to use in this, I should say, um, is pretty lean. Uh, one of the pounds of beef I had was an 80 20 mix. One was, I think, 90 10. You don't want to use a, um, a full fat ground beef, or this sauce will never reduce. It'll just be a layer of liquefied fat everywhere. Okay, now we're adding our wine kind of a lot of wine, kind of a lot more wine than you think you should add. That was easily a cup of wine. And again, I'm using a lot of beef, so you can adjust accordingly, but that's a lot of wine to add to the dish, but we're gonna let it uh, cook off and cook out. our bay leaf stays in there and then we're going to add our chicken stock again you could use whatever kind of stock or just water that you'd like I think that chicken stock is nice and mild for this dish um, we're using a lot of bold flavors but we don't want it to be um, we don't want it to be so rich that it becomes kind of like gamey and inedible so we're putting like about a half a cup 
of our homemade chicken stock in here. And now this is a saucy kind of sauce. And we're going to let this just reduce and reduce down. And frankly, the more times you can do the process of add your stock and wine, let it reduce, add your stock and wine, let it reduce. If you're looking to kind of spend the day cooking and really developing these flavors, great, do that. Um, I'm not going to do that. I don't want it to be that rich. I also um, can't heat my apartment up that long and can't scare the crap out of my dog for that long. Um, but if you've got the time and you've got the, the willing, then by all means, uh, just keep letting it reduce down and adding liquid back in. It will only develop the flavors. You should probably only repeat that process about three times or else you are kind of certifiable. But you know what? In Corona times, it's like we're just trying to make the day go by, right? Like, I haven't even been awake that long. It's 1.38 in the afternoon and like, I can't believe how long this day has been so far. So that's why I'm cooking. But I'm getting hungry, so... You better cook this up quick. So we're going to let this reduce down probably another uh, fewer than 10 minutes, about eight minutes to let all of this reduce down. And while we do that, I'm going to prep the pasta for cooking. So I'll meet you back here once that's all ready to go. So sometimes strange things happen when we are cooking at home because we're not professional cooks. And, um, you know, life gets weird sometimes. So since Baldor was the only, this is still reducing by the way, since Baldor was the only uh, company that was doing home deliveries when I ordered my food for what well, turned out to be the next kind of week and a half, two weeks, um, Baldor is a fantastic catering company. Um, and so they do things in large catering restaurant sizes. I thought that the box that they had delivered to me had 10 individual boxes of fusilli pasta in it. I don't know why I thought that. I just opened the box and I'd like to introduce you to the newest member of my family, Barilla Fusilli, um, the uh, Italian child who's apparently adopted. So, um, not only do I have this, but I now have a second one as well. Uh, two of these were in the box. Okay, so now our noodles are perfect al dente. I'm actually gonna shut the heat on them so that they stop cooking. And our beef bolognese is looking incredible. So what we're going to do is Add our al dente pasta directly in to our bolognese. And it's absolutely fine if we get pasta water in. In fact, it's preferred if we get pasta water in because pasta water is magical. It has all of the starch from the pasta in it. And uh, it's flavored with salt because we always flavor our pasta water, always, always. Everyone, please stop putting olive oil in your pasta water, for the love of God. We want sauce to stick to the noodles. So the noodles won't stick to each other once you put them in the sauce. Don't worry about that. Um, but we have salted our pasta water, so it's super flavorful. And it's our only opportunity to actually flavor our pasta. So that's why we do it. Mixing all of this in, the pasta water, because it's starchy, is actually going to give the bolognese a creamy quality. And so we're just finishing cooking the pasta in the sauce. So I'm gonna let a little bit of this pasta water cook off. And when it's looking nice and saucy and beautiful, we're gonna shut the heat and I'll show you what it looks like plated. Here we have our completed pasta bolognese. See how the, the bolognese gets in all the little crevices of the pasta that we selected. Perfect little, little vehicle for bolognese.
Oh my God. The tomato flavor is just perfect. The beef has these really like round, whiny flavors in it because of all the, the liquids that we used. We removed the bay leaf because you don't want to eat that, but you can absolutely taste the kind of depth of flavor that that provides. Mm. Such a great dish. And this keeps for days, especially if you separate out the bolognese from the pasta. So happy cooking, and thank you so much for joining me on Cooking from Quarantine. Bye-bye.